Is Perth the best place to live in Australia? The people who live there certainly seem to think so. I've made lots of videos over the last year comparing Australia's major cities so that you guys can decide on the right city for you if you're moving to Australia or if you're moving city within Australia. I thought it would be useful to go through the comments on some of these videos and let you know what the locals thought and what other information they added. I'm Lisa from Australian Travel and Migration blog, dreaming of downunder.com. If you haven't already, you can download my free Australian city comparison chart. I'll leave a link below. I've just updated that so it's got all the most recent figures on property and rental prices and I've improved it so I've got lots of charts and things for those of you who prefer that to tables. It's got average temperatures, it's got rainfall, number of sunny days, property prices, rental prices, cost of living index, so it's really useful if you're thinking of moving over here. My Australian city comparison videos have had lots and lots of views and so many of you have commented, so thank you if you've added your thoughts, it's really helpful to people who are trying to make the decision of where to live in Australia and my Perth to Brisbane video has had about 300 comments now so I thought that it would be really useful to go through them and pull out the most useful things that locals have said. I won't read all the comments out, some of them obviously are a bit trolly. <laughs> people get very passionate about the cities, some people are looking for an argument so I'll miss, I'll miss the silly ones off but anything that I think is useful I've put into a document so I'm also going to go through my Perth versus Sydney and get some of those comments and Perth versus Adelaide. The reason I picked Perth is that seems to be the place that most people have wanted to talk about. I will say that the Perth to Brisbane video, it was auto playing on YouTube after a news report about how many people are suddenly moving to Perth. So I do think that most of the people who've watched the videos are probably from Perth or people who want to move to Perth. So that might be why there's the most comments about Perth. But anyway, there were so many about Perth that I've made that the main focus of the video. But I will talk about other things people have said about the other cities, Brisbane and Melbourne's been mentioned and Sydney and Adelaide. So let's go. Okay, spectacles. Right, um, so remember some of these are just people's opinions and everyone has different opinions. So, you know, people have different views on things, but I'm just going to read through some of them. I will paraphrase them because some of them are long, some people don't use punctuation. <laughs> so but I'm just going to whiz through them. Okay, let's start with things about the lifestyle in Perth. Perth is a big city full of small towns. The small town feel is very pronounced. When people say, how are you going? They really want to know. In Australia, they say, how are you going? Instead of, how are you doing? Or, all right, like we say in England, it just means, how are you? Hello, basically. Okay, another person. Haven't been to Brisbane, but Perth is really small and boring. Very few stores and not really even a mall in the city. Very good dry weather though. I have to say I disagree. I think there's lots of shops in Perth. It's a, a reasonably sized city. Um, okay, a response to that. Perth ain't at all small or boring. In fact, the population will outdo Brisbane's in near future and booming based on research. Um, Perth population will reach 2.8 million by the end of June 23. And Perth is expected to leapfrog Brisbane to claim the title of Australia's third largest city by 2028, according to the official national statistics. Look up any of these if you want to fact check them. I'm not going to fact check them, but this is what people are saying. Perth's population to hit 4.6 million by 2050. If you're from Sydney or Melbourne, yes, they're bigger at present. Um, it's definitely a good sized city and big enough for a lot. And we have everything here. Okay, another comment. Perth is a suburban city. The city centre is small, but all the action is out in the suburbs. Perth is a beach, surfing, boating and lifestyle city with more emphasis on outdoor activities. Also, Perth doesn't try to impress with loads of theme parks and flashy tourist attractions. Perth has natural beauty, so it doesn't need those things. You need to get out and explore Perth. It doesn't, it doesn't just hand it all in a plate like some bigger cities do. There you go. And that person left quite a lot of comments, so thank you to you. I won't read all the usernames out because I don't know if you want your name read out in a video, but um, thank you to that person who left lots of information actually and responded to a lot of people. Even took on some trolls. Thank you. <laughs> okay, another comment. I'm very impressed with the Perth train system. For a population just over 2 million, it is very extensive when compared to Vancouver, population 2.6 million. Perth Railway is way ahead for a populated city of its size. Some of them seem a bit random, but some of them were replies to other not useful comments or I don't know. I've just picked out ones that I think are useful. Okay. Um, 
also the person that left the long comment before put in another comment that I've been to most of the capital cities in Australia, plus loads in the US, Canada, England and Singapore. I have never found a city I would rather live in than Perth. A lot of Perth residents are very passionate about Perth, I have to say. Okay, another person. Um, so this person is a retiree. I moved to Western Australia in 2021 from Canberra. Um, sold my house and purchased a four bedroom, two bathroom home in one of the coastal suburbs of Perth, about 55 kilometers south. Having lived in Perth as a child, I always wanted to move back to Perth as it was the first part of Australia my family experience, having migrated from England. I wasn't going to read them word for word, I am, but it's, it makes it more interesting. <laughs> um, a 10 minute walk to the beach, 45 minute train journey to the city CBD, and I'm totally living the dream. Brisbane is not for me, floods, cyclones, humidity, yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> Um, house prices are cheaper in Perth, cost of living not too bad, lifestyle is relaxed and lots of things to see and do. Lots of people are buying up investment properties or making the move to the west. Isolation is not a problem, like living anywhere, you get used to where you live over time. Interesting video, based on your experiences, Perth is the winner for me. Yeah, there's quite a lot of comments about the isolation, so if you haven't watched the other videos or you're not aware, Perth is on the west coast of Australia and most of the other like big cities are along the east or the southeast, so it is an isolated city in terms of its proximity to other big cities, particularly in Australia. Uh, some people don't like it, some people say it's not a problem, and then lots of people mention that it's really quick to fly to parts of Asia for holidays, so that's a really good point. Anyway, let's go on some more. This person lives on the central coast, New South Wales, that's just north of Sydney. Uh, my wife and I are moving to north of Perth in March this year. Can't stand living on the coast any longer. Not very happy about quite a few things there. <laughs> I won't read them all out. But um, my wife and I holiday in Perth in September 22 and absolutely love the place. Friendly people, infrastructure is better, plenty of parking space. Yes, they hit you up with parking meters. Sold our home in less than two weeks and managed to pick up a 2018 built four bedroom ducted AC with pool and all the mod cons with change left over in a great area. A few people have said they bought big houses in Perth. They haven't said what their old house was like, but I'm assuming it was smaller than that. Okay, um, someone else has said downside of Perth is too far away from anything else. Okay, we knew that. Another person, um, Brisbane's close to Sydney and Melbourne, yes, but for people in Perth, Asia is on our doorstep. It's easier and so much cheaper to holiday in Bali than it is travelling all the way to the east for nothing special. That's actually a good point. I've really, I've travelled a lot of Australia, um, but I'm going to the UK next week for a long trip and I'm coming back and I'm going to stop in Thailand on the way back and it did sort of give me itchy feet to see other countries because I've, I've been here seven years now and I've, I've seen loads of Australia and I hadn't really thought that much about other international holidays. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the price of the hotel I booked in Thailand, you just, uh, even with a flight there, I think from here, if you were staying somewhere for maybe two weeks, like it, it probably would be cheaper than going on holiday in Australia. Generally, hotels are quite expensive in Australia. So there's a, can you stop it? Teddy, Teddy, I'm a house sitting a puppy. He's, uh, <laughs> he's playing with some cushions. Okay, next comment. I'm planning to move to Perth from Melbourne. Melbourne is beautiful, but the weather is horrible and the traffic is bad. Uh, someone else said, I love the layout of Melbourne, so it is to get around and lots to see, but as a tourist, the graffiti and homeless is a turn off. Homelessness is a small problem in Perth CBD. Hopefully the authorities don't let it get out of control. Uh, yeah, there is another comment like that about the homelessness in Perth CBD. And I have to say after, um, I lived there, it's quite a few years ago, but I lived kind of near the CBD in East Perth. It was only a 15 minute walk and I definitely noticed um, homelessness in Perth, I would say more than anywhere else I've been. Maybe not Melbourne, I've only visited Melbourne quite briefly. Um, I didn't feel that it was kind of dangerous or rough, but it was definitely noticeable, and that's something a few people have pointed out. Uh, but it does sound like it's just centred in the CBD. CBD is the city centre, if you're not from Australia, that's what they call it, Central Business District. Okay, another person, lived in both Perth and Brisbane. Perth is my preferred city, still developing, less traffic, and properties are still affordable. Another comment. Perth is only hot for about three months of the year. It has a very Mediterranean climate for about four to five months and is cold for four to five months. 
Brisbane feels hot for about six months of the year. It's easier to cool off in Perth. Perth is much easier to get around. People spend far less time on a commute. There's excellent public transport, buses and trains. Uh, tied in closely to the highway and freeway system. I've lived for many years in both cities. As far as beaches go, there is just no comparison. And you're only a maximum of 30 minutes away from a beach anywhere in Perth. House prices are only very high in both cities if you have a desperate need to live near to the CBDs. And they're very reasonable if you live 30 to 40 minutes drive away from work. Uh, assuming you work in the city. The houses are much prettier in Brisbane, but as the lady says, oh, that's me. Um, they're far more expensive in Brisbane, yes. Um, I think Brisbane is more suited to young couples who don't have children. Perth is extremely child friendly and there's much less stress on family life. The biggest downside to Perth is the feeling that you're two dimensionally trapped between the hills and the sea. However, you just have to drive a couple of hours either north or south and you're met with the most incredible expanse of Australian nature. Perth is also amazingly close to Asia. Four hours gets you to Singapore and about three hours to Bali. Another person. I've lived in Brisbane for 12 years. Then I moved to Perth 20 years ago. I'm here forever. Awesome family city. Beaches are incredible. So relaxed here. Another person. I'm in Perth, just holidayed to Brisbane in November 2022. Perth has a small homeless problem in the CBD, brackets small compared to Melbourne, uh, with no apparent pushback by the authorities to contain, help or move them on. Brisbane has a much more visible police presence in the CBD and the homeless seem to be contained to a few streets away from the casino. Just an observation of a few days of being a tourist, but Brisbane be Brisbane CBD feels safer than Perth CBD, but I've never had any problems in Perth, having lived here for over 50 years. Okay, new person, definitely Perth. I've lived in all the major cities and settled in Perth because the lifestyle isn't rushed. That seems to be a common theme, nice and laid back. It's actually the most remote city in the world, but it's only a three to five hour flight to anywhere in Asia. Perth also has amazing beaches and food someone's replied i love the short flights as well although outside of indonesia you're probably looking at close to eight hours i think it's an exciting feeling knowing that you could take a nap on my in bali within a couple of hours tickets are really cheap too you can get returns for 250 to 300 dollars if you're not too picky particularly great if you're a remote worker and can travel okay so that asia thing again that's good okay 100 percent perth the only sad thing is missing all my friends in melbourne Perth offers lots of shopping centres, cheap housing and much less traffic. So many things to do within 60 minutes radius. Lastly, bad weather in Melbourne and much better predictable weather in Perth. Somebody had asked about Melbourne versus Perth in the comments, that was why they wrote that. Okay, now some of the comments about the Brisbane lifestyle. Brisbane for me, but I can't go past Perth beaches. Another person, if you've got family and want a quiet place to settle, then Perth is great. If you're single or in a couple who want a bit more life and vibrancy, then Brisbane wins hands down. Brisbane is also better for day trips. There are so many places to go within a two hour drive, including Byron Bay. Byron Bay is very cool. Okay, uh, Brisbane is better than Perth because it's near the two most amazing beach side cities in Australia. Perth is better than Brisbane beach wise as Brisbane has none worth noting except maybe Redcliffe. What Brisbane lacks in quality beaches, it makes up for in wonderful mountain hinterland and countryside, okay? You comment, I'm from Perth, but I have lived in Brisbane for 22 years, very similar feel, both friendly and I love them both the same. I lived in Sydney for six months and left in that time and went back to Brisbane, Sydney was not for me. Another person, I live near the sea in Brisbane. It's heaven on earth, the consistent sea breezes, temper, the summer humidity. It's also less hectic on the coast, but any time I want hectic, it is just one train ride away to the CBD. Reply, exactly. Brizzy has a 66 kilometer coastline. If ocean views and marina vibes are your thing, there's plenty of it. To name a few, Manly, Cleveland, Redlands Bay and Redcliffe. I have to say I don't know much about the beaches in Brisbane. I lived there for a year a long time ago as a student, but um, I mean, we used to go down to the Gold Coast on the train, but I didn't go and look at any actual Brisbane kind of coastal areas, but it does sound like there's some stuff to see. Okay, Brisbane is much better if you want to be connected to the rest of the country and the world. It also has a distinctive culture and architecture found nowhere else. It's significantly larger than Perth. Once you factor in the two coasts on your doorstep, which adds another million people. Doggy, can you stop it? Response, agreed, there is still some cool old architecture in Brisbane.
sorry about the dog noise he's messing with cushions but if he's not doing that he's gonna stop barking so <laughs> it's the lesser of two evils i rather perth brisbane too busy response i'm from perth lived in sydney for 10 years perth is a nice city but very isolated i prefer the eastern states for its awesome coastline i think the the west of australia has a really awesome coastline but just not as built up um, I was born in Perth and live in Brisbane. I can't wait to move back to Perth. Humidity in Brisbane sucks. Perth has a better lifestyle for sure. Answer. <laughs> um, D-A-F-U-Q. I won't say it because I can't swear. <laughs> I mean, I might get demonetised if you're over 55 maybe. Lifestyle. Try finding a decent, reasonably priced restaurant in city, not in Fremantle. Brizzy has plenty. FFS. <laughs> I will read some funny ones out. Uh, okay, driving comments. I live on the Gold Coast, just south of Brisbane, and I travel up to Brisbane fairly often. One thing about Brisbane is how difficult it is to learn your way around when driving. The roads are like a maze, and everybody speeds. Take one wrong turn, and you can end up in an underground toll road and pop out somewhere on the other side of town, or even over the river. I have to say, I did a big road trip all across the south coast and the east coast of Australia. Um, I did find Brisbane the most difficult to drive around, which I didn't expect. Uh, Melbourne's quite difficult with all the tram lines and hook turns and things but um Brisbane is a little bit higgledy piggledy okay I fly into Perth once a month I'm here now I had a shocker driving up the Tonkin highway this week <laughs> to be fair the road works Perth is pretty good if you want great beaches nightlife is also good enjoy your trip to WA okay and uh, next I'm going to move on to the weather there's so much about this that I had to put in a separate document <laughs> um so with the weather I made some earlier videos about Perth um, and I didn't mention wind because I didn't know it was windy and then I had locals telling me you haven't mentioned the wind, you haven't mentioned the wind, it's one of the windiest cities in the world so on. So I looked at the wind, it is windy apparently. Um, anyway, lots and lots of discussions about the wind, opinions about the wind, everyone's got different things to say about the wind but here we go, here's a section on Perth's wind. <laughs> Perth is not windy in summer. I wish it was. It's windy in winter. I live here. <laughs> Another person. It's mostly a relief, but there are days when it just won't stop right from the morning. I remember from February onward last year, that's like the end of summer, there was not much wind. No, no barking. Uh, I like playing tennis, and this summer I've not had a single day when we didn't have to battle the wind on the court. I fully expect to play like a pro in autumn when the wind stops. Laughing. Uh, crying with laughter emoji. Perth windy, really, are you sure? Someone's responded. If you ride a bicycle in Perth during the summer months, you become aware of the wind for sure. Yes, Perth makes it in the list of one of the windiest cities in the world. Someone else has been, <coughs> Stop it. Hey, in winter, it's very windy. It's not windy in summer. I don't know where you got that from. <laughs> yes, it's windy at the beach, but not in the city in summer. I wish it was. Okay, another person. Perth and the southwest is windy. It's become much more windy in recent years, and the winter's longer. Australia, the Pacific, is currently in the La Nina part of the climate cycle, so the southwest in particular is cooler than normal. It's a lovely part of Australia and a lovely part of the world. If you want to get away from the crowds, it's a good place to be. Someone's replied, the southwest wind is very welcome on those hot summer days, helps to cool things down. I live about 50 kilometres south of Perth, so I know what it is like. Okay. I moved to Perth after living in Sydney for five years, Canberra in one year, and Melbourne 11 years. Perth is a beautiful city. I didn't feel any winds in Perth, which are heavier than in Melbourne. Okay, Melbourne's definitely windy too. I remember having to leave the beach in Melbourne because suddenly this massive wind came <laughs> from basically grab this stuff and run. Um, okay, Perth is windy in the summer, question mark. I live here. Please direct me to where the wind is. Someone has brought anywhere along the scarf in the morning. We get roaring easterly winds in the morning and often need to pick up our bins. I work in Quinana and we get a good sea breeze in the afternoon. Someone put about Dr. Fremantle. That's the name of the wind, I think. Uh, and then someone else has put, I live in Perth Hills. The only wind we get is if I'm a bit gassy. That's lovely. <laughs> I'm from Perth, it's really windy, but when it's 28, who cares? Someone else, windy, but not stormy, is a plus. Keeps the air clean. Okay, so people seem to like the wind, mostly. <laughs> um, is Perth a city that's very windy? This is one of my videos that I didn't mention the wind in. I heard that it's the third windiest city in the world. Someone said, near the coast it gets quite windy, and also in the city. Someone else said, the Frio, the Frio Doctor. Um, 
Okay, very windy on the coast and the city. Kite surfing paradise. The best month for very little wind is April, nice sunny days, cooler nights and a little breeze. March is okay as well, but much hotter. December is extremely windy. December is the middle of summer. Uh, especially when the sea breeze, the Frio Doctor, comes in, the summer also gets strong easterly breezes, creating a fire danger in the hills. Lots of different opinions on whether the wind is in the summer or the winter. Um, when you see those Perth kite servers playing amazingly in the waves along the beautiful beaches, you won't say windy is the matter in Perth. That's cool. Okay, uh, temperatures. The temperature in Perth can reach 45 or 46 degrees in summer and that's normal, 31 is more like a spring season. Um, so the average temperature I think in January was 31, but it's, sorry, the average maximum. I do get those from the Bureau of Meteorology, I don't just make them up. <clears throat> um, but yeah, obviously it can be lower or higher than that, but that was the average maximum in the middle of summer. Um, there is a period in summer that is humid, like Brisbane, due to the cyclones at north. Okay, uh, autumn is our wind. Autumn is our windy season, not summer. We have Rottnest Island. You do have Rottnest Island. It's nice. Uh, no contest, Perth all the way, especially the weather. Okay, let's have a look. Been to Brisbane twice. It was okay. Perth wins hands down. It has much more beautiful river waterway, and it has better weather. It has more days of sunshine than Brisbane. It's drier here and not humid like Brisbane. Queensland is a beautiful state, but city-wise, Perth trumps Brisbane, or Brizzy as they call it. Ugh. <laughs> uh, response. Not in winter it don't. Dolesville. Ugh. <laughs> Another response. Very long and cold and rainy winter in Perth versus short, mild, sunny winter in Brisbane. World-class holiday island destinations near Brisbane. While Perth has Rotto, unhappy face, emoji. Okay, flies, yeah, flies are a thing. Um, I've heard it's windy often, is that by the ocean or inland? Is, is there an annoying bug season when there are lots of flies? Someone said yes, there are lots of flies, especially in the bush areas when you're trying to get your morning walk in. But mainly they bother you in the hot summer months and that's when the wind becomes your friend. Yeah, I do remember flies, although not in the city, I did a house sit inland, about an hour inland in Perth, I think it was. And it was, yeah, in the bush, huge flies. Um, but I didn't see them much in the city. Okay, Brisbane, you didn't touch on the weather events in Queensland, flooding and cyclones, etc. Someone else says Queensland gets storms and other parts of South East Queensland get storms and rain. Most, 90% of the weather doesn't reach Brisbane CBD, it goes north, south, east, west, or disappears before reaching Brisbane CBD. Hmm, okay. Next we have from from my Perth versus Adelaide videos and a bit from Adelaide versus Canberra and there's a little bit on Sydney so I'll just read what I've pulled out. Perth born and bred here, definitely the West is the best. Been to Adelaide and lived in Queensland, far North Queensland and Brisbane. Came back to Perth, the people are far more friendly and laid back in WA. There's a lot of stuff about how people are weird and that kind of thing. I didn't put them in because it's just, it seemed like people just being mean, but you can look through all the comments if you want to read all that stuff. Okay, I moved to Australia in 2008. My choice of destination was between Adelaide and Perth. I loved both cities and the fact that they were both cheaper and less frenetic, overcrowded than Sydney and Melbourne. Um, in the end, I plumped for Perth, mostly because I work in construction and Perth was undergoing a boom in that area at the time I moved. But the two cities are remarkably similar in climate, culture, populations and lifestyle. And for some reason, people in Melbourne and Sydney still sneer at them and they pay dollar, 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 loads of dollar signs for a dog box located two hours outside the city. Okay, fair enough. The only criticism I have of Perth is the drivers. There's a lot of comments about Perth drivers actually. Oh my bleep word. I have driven in Cuba, Thailand, Vietnam, Italy, Cambodia and Hong Kong. Perth has the bleep drivers I have ever seen. Okay. Watch out in Perth on the roads. <laughs> um, Adelaide is currently the most livable city in Australia and the third most livable city in the world. It is also the only city in the world that is surrounded by parklands. You also could have mentioned that Adelaide is in close proximity to world-class wine regions. A few people said that actually. I did miss that off. And it's only a short walk to the world-renowned Adelaide Oval. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. People in Adelaide seem to like living in Adelaide. Well, people in Adelaide do seem to really like it from the comments. Um, 
Okay, more Adelaide. Adelaide sits in a basin, so it's completely surrounded by hills, not a lot of sea breeze, whereas Perth spreads along the coast and gets the Fremantle Doctor. That's the wind. <laughs> Adelaide is an older city too. Okay, long comment. Perth is almost a million more people than Adelaide now, and the gap is increasing. Perth seems to build new infrastructure. Adelaide does upgrades. More music artists and shows tend to visit Perth over Adelaide now because of the bigger population. For example, Justin Bieber skipped Adelaide on his last tour. Justin, what were you thinking? Um, another lifestyle thing is the sea temperature. This is something a few people brought up and I would never have thought of that. The, um, the water temperature is warmer in Perth apparently than Adelaide. I might look into that actually and add it into the chart. Perth sea temperature is a good three to four degrees warmer than Adelaide, which is a big difference uh, for how comfortable it is to swim, even on a hot day. Perth beaches are prettier with whiter sand and clearer water. They have got amazing beaches in Perth, I can't deny it. Adelaide has horrible 15 degree maximum days like Melbourne. Perth in general is a warmer city with warmer winters. I think another thing is trains, Perth's electrified its trains back in the 90s. Oh my gosh, that's too much. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, someone else has said the wine regions in Adelaide are great, McLaren Vale and Barossa Valley, a few people have said this. Um, the last time I was in Adelaide, also at the southeast coast of South Australia, Robe and Kingston, great holiday spots, close to SA's best wine region of the Coonawarra, great memories. Okay, another person, I'd recommend Perth to live, great beaches, bushland, riverside activities, beautiful city, low key and relaxed atmosphere. Perfect climate, though can be very hot in summer. Along the river and beaches are the best locations. If you want something quieter, I'd recommend Bunbury, two hours from Perth. The towns in the southwest are great for holiday as they have surf beaches, wineries, bushwalking, though the most scenic spots in WA are on the south coast from Walpole through to Albany and the natural forests, five hours south of Perth. If you want to know about any of those places in WA, I've got loads of guides on my blog drive itineraries and destination guides. Okay, love this video, it mirrors my thoughts on the two cities. It's interesting to see comments here, where people say the city is better, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think it's fantastic that this beautiful country has cities so different, but for someone looking to travel or move to Australia, it may be good to choose either Adelaide or Perth, unless your sole purpose is to go clubbing and nightlife, then choose Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane. I don't go clubbing and I chose Sydney and I love it. It's got loads of nature. <laughs> I live by the sea, I live by lakes, I live by forests. Um, geographically, Adelaide is probably best if you want to keep your costs down and use it as your base place to live and then get cheap flights from city to city. If you're Australian, be proud of your whole country. It's the best in the world. Also need to add in, Adelaide is the only city in Australia where the CBD is in the middle of the greater Adelaide city, which makes getting to and from the city quite easy and fast. It's not a city where you'll be stuck in the car for four hours per day unless you are an Uber driver. Fresh comment, both are great cities. A lot of people, uh, a lot of Perth people never go to the east coast of Australia. I've only ever been to Adelaide and Melbourne and that was due to relatives. In Perth, you just go overseas, okay? I live in Mandurah, just south of Perth and we always visit family in Mount Barker in Adelaide. So coming from Wollongong, south of Sydney, I personally like Perth, even though I've only lived in WA for eight years. The only difference I see is that Perth is so new and clean. It is a very modern looking city in the centre. Um, and yes, it's taken some time to form a city culture, but it is getting there. Adelaide is nice, but old, and I do not like old. Cheers. And Perth, like you said, is so spread out and all coastal, aqua water, white sand, plenty of sun, and that's what other places have not got. If you like the arts, there is no question that Adelaide is better. Okay, Adelaide is very gourmet. Wine, cheese, pastries, small goods, fruit and vegetables are world class and easy to find. Adelaide is extremely easy to get around. If I was going to advertise and I'm not, I would put a sign 25 minutes out of the Melbourne or Sydney CBD saying, if you were in Adelaide, you'd be home right now. <laughs> That's clever. Okay. Uh, I think the two cities are distinctively different, making for a difficult comparison. Adelaide is without a doubt better for a more urban experience, with Adelaide CBD being fantastic. And yes, it's certainly closer to the East Coast. However, I think Perth is sort of flying under the radar at present as becoming the most prosperous parts of the country due to the lower cost of property and higher median incomes and job prospects. Combined with beautiful and untouched coastlines, Perth wins it for me, but I see why some prefer Adelaide. That was a good, sensible comment. Balanced. 
No toll roads. No toll roads make both Perth and Adelaide much more livable than Melbourne or Sydney. I have to say, I've only been on toll roads in Sydney about twice in seven years, and that was because I got in the wrong lane and couldn't get out of it. But I suppose it depends where you have to drive to work. Um, I'm returning to Adelaide via Perth. You live in paradise, whether it's Adelaide or Perth. Everything else is a first world issue or a mere inconvenience. You're spot on, someone said. People who get in to point scoring generally have no idea how blessed they are. Both are wonderful cities and very much overshadowed like all the rest of Australia by Sydney and Melbourne. But that's a bonus because family is everything and you could not ask for two more wonderful cities to raise your kids void of the pitfalls of big tourist cities. Okay, cool. Oh, we've got more. I've lived in both Adelaide and Perth for around 10 years each. Now in Adelaide, Perth has a beach vibe and is a more modern city with regards to its architecture. I would agree with that. It's also obviously a much wealthier city due to Western Australia's massive mining industry. Yes, Adelaide is the perfect mix of old and new. In my opinion, the food and wine culture is much more part of its social fabric than in Perth. Adelaide's art scene is arguably the best in the country, given its population is only a quarter that of Sydney and Melbourne. Okay. In my experience, at Adelaide beaches, the water is calm, flat and shallow, and good for a paddle. Perth ocean beaches are much more prone to winds and waves, great for body, great for board, body, and windsurfing, but waters are deeper and can be treacherous on occasion. The river beaches are good for paddling. Sharks sometimes get hungry in Perth. Coastal waters, don't know about Adelaide. Suburban railway, significantly more developed in Perth. Perth is probably more decentralised than Adelaide. Perth is certainly windy. Okay. Perth is close to Asia, that's a huge positive. Adelaide is far more beautiful with its colonial buildings and parks and gardens. Um, I live in Perth and Adelaide. Perth has a better choice of work. Perth is a lovely city, but Adelaide is more central. The cost of living is more expensive in Perth. Currently, there is a housing shortage. I hope that helps. It does, thank you. Um, okay, Adelaide is abundant with history and culture and has notable European appeal, whereas Perth is modern and has a striking river the size of a harbour. Yes, both are exquisite cities and I believe Oz is too best, okay? I live in Adelaide, which for me is the best city in the world, but we do have a colder and greyer winter, which suits the old world vibe of the city. I drive in the Adelaide Hills, sorry, a drive in the Adelaide Hills is like a day out in Great Britain or Europe, as two are our magnificent wine regions, 16 distinct regions, making Adelaide one of the great wine capitals of the world. That said, if I didn't live here, I would move to Perth, but for many different reasons, some of which you captured. Okay, another one on architecture. Perth knocked down a lot of older buildings in the 1960s during the mining booms. I have heard from other people that Perth got rid of a lot of their older buildings. Um, there was the argument that Perth was a country town and had to modernise. Great pity. Okay. Um, now from the Perth versus Sydney video. Perth is a very user-friendly city. The roads and cycle paths are smooth and well maintained. It's a better place to live than Sydney in my view. Someone else said, I live in Perth, it's fine. Just like anywhere else, it has its problems. It may seem detached from the east, but that's due to the size of WA, which makes up a third of Australia. But with only a population of around 2.6 million, the place is empty compared to Victoria and New South Wales. The pace of life here is significantly slower than Sydney or Melbourne. It's far less stressful. Its isolation means you will either love it or think it's just too quiet. Unlike Queensland, we have no need to boast about the amount of sunshine we have here or the quality of our numerous beaches. Sand Groper heaven. <laughs> okay. The pace of life in Perth is in the slow lane, which is great. Sydney is okay for a visit. Uh, we're virtually catatonic in the lower Perth Hills. The place is virtually empty. It's bad form to rush anyway, so I think you'll either love that or hate it. Um, another person. Perth is very beautiful, housing excellent quality and affordable, but sadly has safety issues, drugs and homelessness. Sydney is very expensive, but much more variety of jobs, food is great and safety better. Perth can be boring, whereas Sydney is very exciting and action packed. If I had a few million dollars, I'd prefer living in Sydney, otherwise Perth. Yep, Sydney's housing costs are enough to put most people off. Um... And then someone else has said to that, I would like to clarify drugs and homelessness are only problems in certain areas of Perth. I've lived in Perth nearly my whole life and never had a safety concern. Perth is more for people who 
want a more relaxed holiday and there are things in Perth, however you have to do a lot of research to find the things to do. With food, I found that Perth and Sydney have similar quality foods, but Sydney does have more variety. That's it, oh, hang on. Funny comments, there's a few, there's a few funny ones. This Aussie accent is hilarious, crying with laughter emoji. Cairns, beaches, another crying with laughter emoji. I'm not Australian, by the way, I'm sure you've noticed. <laughs> There's a reply in German, I don't know what that means. Someone else wrote whatever, and then someone wrote, she's English, not Australian. Thank you to you, yes. I just didn't think that was worth bothering to reply to. Someone wrote, Perth is a hundred times better than Brisbane. The reply was, if you are old or a bogan. <laughs> bogan is like a chav if you're English or, yeah, look it up. And then Chris Hemsworth AU, who I think probably isn't the real Chris Hemsworth said, both of them, Oh, perfect. So there we go. That's all of the opinions. Okay, that was a pretty good roundup. Lots and lots and lots of people pro Perth. People seem to love Perth. Some people think it's a little bit too quiet. Some people think the buildings are too modern for them. It's definitely a very modern looking city, I think. Um, you've got quite a lot of older architecture in Sydney and Melbourne and Adelaide. Um, I think Brisbane's fairly modern looking too in the city, but it does, it does have some older buildings as well. And it's got a lot of the old Queenslander houses, which are quite unique. Um, think what you will about the wind, maybe do some research. <laughs> Sounds like most people are fine with the wind. You can go kite surfing, it cools you down when it's hot. <laughs> um, and it's not as humid in Perth as it is in Brisbane. And Sydney's also humid, by the way, in the summer. I hope you enjoyed that. Go and read through the comments if you want to know more or add to them or if you've got anything else to add about Perth or any of the other cities, comments about living there and things that people haven't mentioned, maybe put them in the comments of this video and let me know also if there are any other cities you want me to cover. I haven't covered all of the major cities yet and particularly if maybe you want any regional towns or cities covered. I know when people are moving to Australia, if you don't know much about it, you only really hear about the big capital cities. Um, but there are absolutely loads of other cities and towns as well all around Australia. So let me know if there's anything else that you're interested. Thank you for watching and please give the video a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos on life and travel in Australia. Bye. Uh, shh. Uh. Go, go get a toy. Find a toy. Fetch. Fetch. I'm just having to let a puppy bite me to keep him quiet. That hurts. I moved to Perth after living in Sydney for five years, Canberra in one year, and Melbourne for 11 years. Stop beating me up. Stop it. The southwest wind is very welcome on those hot summer days. Stop it. Go and find a toy. Fetch. Fetch. Go and find a toy. No, don't bite me. Um.